I'm going to show you the process that I use to um, obtain diff for LiDAR and how I go about using it in 3D Studio Max. So this is the website. Uh, you can select the area that you want to download either by zooming into the map or you can also type the location there. But I'm just going to zoom into some random place and draw a selection area here does have a little snap to 90 degrees I think it did no it's not that's okay if we double click on the last one to complete the area and then we can download our area uh, get available tiles and so we can choose what we want I'm still learning what all of these different things are um, but what we really need is the point cloud so I'm going to select that. You can choose the year, obviously choose the latest one that it's got available. Resolution, it's only got one meter available anyway. And let's download all. So it's downloading. And actually it's very handy that while it's downloading I'm on this next page. This is Cloud Compare. This is the, um, the website for it. And it's the open source software that I use to uh, convert the point cloud into a mesh that I can use in Max. So you can download it for free from this website. So if we have a look at this, we can see we've got a .las file, which is the, the point cloud information that we need. So I'm just going to open up Cloud Compare. and open up that file I'm just gonna say apply all and I'm gonna say yes and here we have this tile you right click to pan middle click to zoom in and out and left click to rotate and we can see the point cloud data and it does have you can see the color a, a grayscale color coloring of the point cloud um, I haven't found a way so far to to get uh, satellite photography applied to it other than using um, my blender process which uh, I'll probably do in a different a different short tutorial um, but now that we have this point cloud information we need to convert it to a mesh so what I want to take from from this lidar is just the terrain I don't want any of the trees or the houses buildings or anything else I just just want to have the terrain and then I can I add my own trees and my own buildings um, to it so it might not be what you need, but this, this is this is how you would go about just extracting the information that you want. Um, there's a classification. Uh, each each of those elements has been given a classification, and you can see here by the amount of points per per item, uh, what where they sit within that classification. So all I want from this uh, this terrain is just the ground. So I need to select. Um, code number two um, so to do that we go to this min max area here and we want to filter it by range so we want to go from range two to two so we export that and then you can see over here that's all we have in this newly exported point cloud can see from I'll turn that off you can still see that the old one is still complete so it's just made a copy of those so you can always go back and get other information if you want and, and make adjustments uh, now that we have that extraction um, something else that could be handy to know about is this um, the scissor button scissor scissor button up here you can select an area and basically cut it out gives you 
um, different tool set you can just make a polygonal selection I'll double click to close it I think no right click to close it and then you can say you want to um, keep what's outside or keep what's inside of your selection uh, so that's just another thing to be aware of if you only need a small amount of the mesh you can do that as well I'm not doing that for now so now I want to create a, a surface from my t from my point cloud so I have it selected and then I go up to tools and no not tools edit edit mesh delune is the top one I use and it, it extrapolates between the gaps where you've you're missing information from from the higher objects it ex extrapolates the mesh in between those um, in between those points okay here's our saved our um, our new mesh terrain and once we have that we can now export that as an fbx so you have it selected and then you say file save no there's no export options it's just to save and then you have all these different versions of uh, different types of files you can save it as i save mine as an fbx and there it is i'm going to take that into max choose output i just use fbx binary Okay, so we're back in Max now, and I'm going to import that file. And here we can see some interesting things. So we've got the file axis direction is Y up, and the system is Z up. So it's going to come flipped. Um, the other thing, the file units are centimeters, system units are meters. So we just need to make sure we're importing it um, with the correct scale. Um, just making sure that your scale factor is one and it will it will it will convert the file to the right size once if, if you choose choose your right um, choose your right scale options you can see it changes the scale factor so I've worked out for this file that I need centimeters which makes it a scale factor of one because the file units are centimeters okay so in the top viewport we can see that it's the wrong way around and so we'll flip it round 90 degrees and there we have it okay I'll just check the scale I use a rectangle just to see if roughly it's the right sort of size uh, yep about two kilometers that looks about right so we have our mesh and we can optimize it it is quite heavy when it comes in so depending on what what your needs are um, I usually use pro optimize and optimize the mesh crunch it down get rid of a lot of those triangles um, so that's that's end of step one um, I will do a separate tutorial on how I use blender to get some satellite photography and a mix of the blender terrain and the the lidar terrain sometimes with my projects hope that was helpful